Hi Knitters, it's March 11th, 2016. It's a beautiful Friday here in Madison, Wisconsin. The sun is shining. It's going to be close to 60 degrees. We have been having an unseasonably warm, well, I guess it's spring now, almost spring, but February and March, anyway, very warm, and it's been wonderful. I've been outside a lot, I've been hiking, and um, got my bike all, the tires all pumped up and ready to go, and um, it's really fun and nice to see. And uh, even though we had a mild winter, spring is always welcome, as I'm sure it is with you too. Well, I just wanted to say hello today and to see how you're doing out there and to, to do an update I haven't recorded for a bit. I just returned from filming a new craftsy class last week and I'm so excited about it. I think I'll be able to start promoting maybe even next week to let people know what it is and uh, all that good stuff. The class is scheduled to be released on March 28th, 2016, so they have a very fast turnaround. It's not like the book publishing world where you start writing a book and two years later it comes out. It's a much faster uh, process. I couldn't believe, so I filmed two Craftsy classes in 2011 and they've done really well. Um, one is the Not So Itty Bitty Giraffe class um, and then one is a class called We Ones and um, they're both toy knitting classes. The We Ones is a seamless um, from the top down class and it's three little animals. Um, they all have the same body and then they have a different head. And then the giraffe was um, is the project from the cover of my Itty Bitty Toy book. And so we just um, step by step went through that. And that one is a toy that's knit in all in the round, but then you have to stitch the parts together. And uh, I, anyway, so I, I love doing those classes. It went really well. Craftsy was a much newer company then, and the um, filming situation was much different, and the prep for it was much different. Um, when I did the first classes, really the there wasn't a whole lot of there was some checking in and kind of prep, but not not a lot. It wasn't very guided, and uh, now at this point they they have you know, five people filming um, in different studios at the same time. They have, um, you're assigned like a technical editor, a content editor, and uh, my, actually my content editor, you might know her, it's Kim Cherubin from Craft Stash, uh, the Craft Stash podcast. And oh, I really enjoyed working with her. That was really fun. So you should look her podcast up because it's on YouTube for sure. I, I'm not sure if it's on um, iTunes or anything else. But anyway, she's she's great and she was my content editor. Um, so we worked together for um, many weeks working up the script for the uh, class. And then, um, I mean, it was so incredibly different. I can't even tell you. There's a teleprompter. Although you're not always reading, you're not really reading much from the teleprompter. It gives you, you know, bullet points about what you're supposed to cover in each segment. And so it was really helpful to have that. And then um, I was assigned a producer who was fantastic and adorable and such great energy and fun person. So I really enjoyed working with her. She was, she's so cute. I, anyway, cute and smart and really good so that was fun anyway I felt great about it it went really well um, I actually fin finished early, uh, filming a little bit early and because um, it went so well and uh, anyway great all-around experience so that that was a good thing that just has happened and um, I am leaving next week for a good yarn in Sarasota Florida which I'm really looking forward to a lot of People have taught there and they say such great things about it and customers of the store, <clears throat> excuse me, customers of the store absolutely love it. Uh, that store down there and I met the owner and I think it was her daughter at um, some classes. It was a Vogue Knitting Live and I feel like it might have been Pasadena but I'm not sure which location we were at but I met the owner, Susan, <clears throat> and 
she was great and that's gonna be really fun I'm excited about that so that's where I'll be next week uh, I have a lot of stuff to show you and I have a super fun giveaway that just came in the mail yesterday that I, I'm really anxious and excited to share with you um, but first let me just talk about a few things so I'll do some uh, I'll do some just I guess a couple of them are acquisitions and then some of them are things that were sent to me that I want to share with you so okay so um, the first thing I want to share with you is oh and then when I was in Denver filming for Crassie they're located in Denver Colorado I did had a book signing at Fancy Tiger Crafts which I've always wanted to go to and Oh my gosh, I had the nicest group show up and they stayed and stayed and I really got to chat with people and it was so much fun and that store is amazing. It's got fabric and yarn and a huge table where people are hanging out and I, I think it might have been their knit night too. So the store was bubbling with people and um, the host were, so the owners were just so pleasant and kind and fun and anyway I loved it and I had a ball so I, I really liked um, that shop and going there so thank you for having me Fancy Tiger Crafts while I was there I got to meet Emily Straw of um, Knitting Butterflies the podcast and she is so wonderful and sweet and um, that was really fun and she actually was so kind she gave me a ride back to my hotel so I I didn't have to wait for a car, or, um, Uber, t cab, or anything to take me back. So that was really a pleasant thing for me. And thank you, Emily, for that. And I had other people show up too. And I, I won't remember everybody's name, but I'll, I'll post some photos. Um, that was a fun night. So I'll, I'll post some photos. But I also met um, Heather from the Lemonade Shop, and she brought me a couple gorgeous skeins of yarn and they're not with me right here so I'll show them next time um, but that's the lemonade shop and she I love her she's I've been a big fan of hers for a while now so that that was really fun to get to meet her um, and then I also met Nicole of Hugh Loco came and stopped in for a visit and I got to chat with her and meet her uh, and we have a lot in common. <laughs> so she was a public school teacher in Madison um, for a bit. She taught art and um, I taught middle school uh, where her husband actually went to middle school. So that was that was kind of fun to talk about those things. So that was great and I want to thank, thank and there were more people too and they were wonderful and fun to meet. Um, the other um, thing is that Nicole uh, quite a while ago had sent me some yarn and a couple project bags and I want to share those. I posted them on Instagram here or there, especially this one project bag that I've been, I use just a ton. It's just a great size and it's just the sweetest little bag. So I just want to share that with you. There's her adorable logo, Hugh Loco. And then um, the inside, so the front is this gorgeous little tree print, just kind of mod tree print, what I love. This kind of little tree thing here, I love it in so many forms. It's all, you always see that all over the place. And then the inside is just this adorable calico, kind of vintage looking fabric. It's just the sweetest bag. It's the greatest size. I just love the tiny little tab. I don't usually use those big handles so much, so, you know, they're fine, but I don't use them quite as much, so I don't really need them. Um, it's really cute. And then she just put this little cute little enamel zipper pull on it. And it's just a smallish size. You could probably fit two skeins, maybe socks uh, is what I've been knitting with that. And then she sent me this other larger size bag, which is equally as cute and playful and fun. It has this um, bunting on the bottom. Again, her tag, and then these sweet little uh, uh, whales on the top. Again, the enamel pull, zipper pull. They're just nicely made, made and beautiful. And then just a really nice yellow plain inside, which is really pleasant. It just kind of um, makes it easy to see what's in there. So go check out Nicole. She has a podcast on YouTube. She also has an Etsy shop where she sells her hand-dyed yarn which I'm going to show you a little bit of that. She sent me some of her beautiful 
hand dyed yarn. This is her spun base. <clears throat> and this is 80% superwash merino, 10% cashmere, and 10% nylon. 400 yards of a fingering weight in the fawn color. It's just really layered and beautiful. I love it. So that will make just a gorgeous pair of socks, I think, out of this one for me. I love it so much. And then um, this is the same base, the um, Superwash Merino Cashmere Nylon. This is a Stardust colorway. It's a little more variegated. Uh, it does have the um, sparkle to it, a little bit of the, um, I don't know what you call that, but the, the, I don't know if you can see it, but there's just a little touch of the sparkle. It's really pretty. That would make a great shawl or um, socks. And then lastly, she sent me the opal base, which is a 50% superwash merino, 50% silk fingering weight. And this is called shine and it is, it just glows. She sent me two skeins of this. Each one is 438 skeins and that definitely is a shawl. Actually, not exactly, but a little similar. This is my Quaker Ridge Shawlette, which is my own pattern that I made a few years ago. Still my favorite, it's my favorite shawl. I put beading on the edge. It's, it's my favorite. It, oh, I love it. I wear it. I wear it all the time still. Um, but this is beautiful and this would make a really nice shawl too. This is in sport weight. It almost would be fun to knit this shawl up in this fingering weight and that would be That'd be really beautiful. But anyway, check out Nicole. She's talented. She's cute. She's so cute on her podcast, and she's even cuter in person, if that's at all possible. She's like, she's adorable and so pleasant and sweet and nice. So thanks for coming, everybody. That was great fun. Uh, another thing I want to start knitting, I was just talking to my um, former editor, <laughs> at, um, and we... We're good friends and we chat all the time, but I was just talking to him this morning and he said, oh, I love those socks that you made for your son. And I don't have the socks. I just finished with the lollipop yarn and I'm um, I'm doing a giveaway for my leftovers on Instagram. So I'm, I'm going to um, pick a winner later today for that. By the time you see this, I think it'll be closed. <laughs> but um, I combined two stripe, stripe, self-striping balls of the lollipop to get a much longer striping repeat. So one was three stripes and one was four stripes, um, striping repeats. And so I combined those four, you know, seven different colors striping sequence and really fun. I did um, contrasting heels, heels, toes, and cuffs on the socks and they turned out great. And I'll post a picture in the show notes so you can see what I'm talking about. But I think I'm going to try this for, for my editor. I think I'm going to try this, um, this yarn I got when I did the spring fling um, for the Loop U. Not, I think, I guess it was last time um, I picked this up. But this is the Biscotti and C in the Loopy's Mountain Hike. So this must be a special Loop U color way but it has blues and browns and cream and kind of a khaki color in there and then I'm going to do this is the loopy solid series if you're ever looking for a solid fingering weight yarn every color you can think of is there it's just it's beautiful you can hop online and order or go to the shop which is also in Colorado um, but I'm going to do contrasting heels um, cuff heel and toe in the brown and then do a striping um, striping socks for him since he liked the striping socks so I'm, I'm like so excited to knit him socks and <laughs> I love him <laughs> so that was, that made, made me really happy I saw I'm so glad you asked me because I mean how would I know I don't want to force my knitting on him but I do have to say I've knit him a scarf a couple scarves and a couple different hats and then every time I see him which is maybe once a year he is always wearing the things that I've knit him so it's really cute and I know he'll he's very knit worthy <laughs>
I saw uh, Danny of Little Bobbins and also Melody of the Mandarins podcast both knit up this um, Berger de France Gumi 50 sock yarn and it's the sweetest sock yarn. It's speckled with kind of a peachy um, peachy cream reds and browns in it. Oh, I love it so much and I think I'm going to pair it with this soft brown color for the um, cuff heel and toe and I just think that's going to be adorable. So that's the other one I want to cast on. Um, then I have some things that I've been working on. And uh, one of them is, I showed a picture of this. <laughs> I can't remember if I showed it on the blog or um, just on Instagram, but I made this little sweet mitten um, using my, how I, no, not how I knit mittens. Um, waiting for winter, <laughs> I'm getting my sock and my mitten pattern mixed up. But the waiting for winter mitten pattern, um, I used the Quince & Co Osprey, which is, uh, <clears throat> um, which is a, an Aran weight, and the pattern's written for a worsted weight. But what I did was I knit the small size, just the small um, women's size um, in the original pattern, and um, and used that smaller size. I, I normally would knit the medium size, the middle size for me and for my daughter, who has very similar size hands that I do, and um, it worked out great to um, to just use the numbers for the small size with the heavier weight yarn. So if you ever want to do that, that's a, a really good thing to do. And then I just threw in some really simple little stitch patterns. I didn't even, I just kind of made it up as I went along. I alternated these little checks with these little sweet arrows, and I just used some different colors. But what she really wanted was, well, she'd been asking for me to knit her mittens, and then uh, I, I, I was going to do it, and of course, you know, people around here sometimes their their knitting wishes get pushed pushed to the back burner because of my other deadline schedules. But I try, I try to squeeze stuff in for the family too. Um, but then uh, my niece came over, her cousin. They're really good buddies. They're in the same grade um, in high school, and it's really cute. Actually, they're kind of, you know, best friends and cousins too. So it's really kind of sweet. But they, um, she was over and then she said, Mom, try on this mitten that, you know, my niece had. So I tried on her mitten and it was, it's from Target. <laughs> and, <clears throat> you know, it is fine, but I, of course, I don't love a Target mitten compared to like a hand knit mitten. But what she loved about it is that it kind of had this squishy, furry lining to it. So the lining actually is kind of like a, um, uh, like a Sherpa fleece that you could buy at Joann's or something. However, um, it, it, you know, it's, it was really thin. It was a very thin version of that. So, you know, she said, can you line them with fleece or can you? And I thought, well, I don't really want to do that. So I was kind of looking around and I found this um, caribou from Casal by, oh, Haiku, but it's sold through Casal. And um, I tried, I did that. So what I did was I <clears throat> picked up all around the edge here, the cast on edge of the mitten, and I knit an entire mitten going this way out of the caribou. And then I put the mitten inside, you know, I stuffed it inside. And it was just, just didn't feel, it was too thick. It was, it was way too thick. So I ripped it out. It didn't work. Um, you know, I toyed around with, do I knit a mitten that's a size bigger so that it can fit, you know, a big bulky lining mitten, furry lining mitten. But then, I don't know, I, something about like a huge mitten just, it doesn't appeal to me. Um, so like, I, I don't know, like a huge puffy mitten, but, but maybe it would appeal to her. But anyway, it didn't, it didn't really work out that well. So I pulled it out. I'll think of something else fun to do with that. But, um, so now I'm thinking of maybe more like a kid silk haze, um, liner to put in there might be really fun and that'd be very lightweight. So, um, still working on that. I have to see, um, what will work. So if you have any good ideas for me, let me know. <laughs>
That's been kind of a fun project, but I only have one. So then I stalled on it. I only have one done. Poor kid. <laughs> and now it's 60 degrees out and we, you know, we don't wear mittens when it's 60 degrees. <laughs> so um, another thing I've been working on is I finished the back, the front of my, is it the front or the back? It doesn't matter because they're both exactly the same. Oh, let's see. What do you do first? Um, it's the front. So I finished the front. It doesn't matter though. Um, of the, um, it's called the Wolf River by Melissa Shashwari. And it's a pattern on, um, Ravelry, Wolf R River. And it's just a lace sweater pullover. And it has this twisted rib, um, at the bottom. And I love knitting twisted rib. I just love it. I think it looks so cool. Uh, I don't. I don't mind it at all. I know some people kind of find it tedious. I just love it. I think this is a really fun and really simple uh, lace pattern. Um, I'm knitting it out of the Jill Draper uh, Make Stuff the Empire. So this is my shrinking, <laughs> gigantic ball of empire. Um, it's um, I don't know the tag in there, but. I got this at Tolt um, in the Seattle area, um, the yarn shop Tolt Yarn and Wool. And it's so fun, it's so bouncy and springy. It's, a, it's an Aran weight yarn. I'm knitting on in size eight and nine, so I have the, um, the rib, the rib for the back cast on here. I'm ready to start the lace. I have it on a size eight. Um, signature needle and then I'm gonna move up to a size 9 for the lace section so I'm excited about that it went really fast I had put that down for a long time and just hadn't worked on it at all and I just was feeling a little bit burned out <laughs> after the craftsy so I just worked on this a little bit just to kind of give myself a, a little bit of a break um, so that's fun and it, I I think it's gonna be really fun I haven't done a seamed sweater for I can't remember how long just years I think I haven't done a seam sweater so that's kind of fun I used to seam all my sweaters you know I have a, a lot of seam sweaters so that would be kind of fun to do that again I don't I don't mind doing it at all and what you do is actually the only seam in this sweater is to mattress stitch up the sides the arms the um, shoulders are then grafted together the and then you sew up the side to a certain measurement and then you pick up and knit the sleeves are just stockinette in the round and then you pick up um, for the neck band, the collar of the sweater as well. So it's very minimal seaming. Actually, it won't, won't be bad at all. And um, I brought the picture of that. She's a Wisconsin girl too. Nicole um, from Hugh Loco and me and, and Melissa. She goes by Dandelion Girl. Um, I think mine might be a little bit longer than that. I don't know. She looks really tall, of course. <laughs> tall and lanky <laughs> but um I think mine's gonna be a little bit longer on me than that but which is fine I like that so I don't mind um a couple of fun things um I picked up are um I got this book it's called how to be a wildflower um a field guide by Katie Daisy and the reason I ordered this it's by Chronicle Books I, I love Chronicle they do a lot of fun books it has the most beautiful illustrations. It's just kind of an inspiration book. Um, I just love to paint and draw and, you know, sometimes I just love to pick up a book and an art kind of inspiration book. I, I have a lot. I've got a little collection of these going. I should show some of my other ones that I just love so much. Um, it's like every page is just a treat. That reminds me of the beekeeper's quilt. Of course, <laughs> the little hexagons. Um, oh, I mean, I just love it. It's just so, it just inspires me. I got it not too long ago. I just can't put it down. Um, we've got birds. I mean, it's just adorable. She's really talented and fun. So um, anyway, I thought I would share that with you. I'm trying to see if there's a little author information here, but... Oh, she's from uh, Lindenwood, Illinois. So she's a Midwest girl. So state right below Wisconsin. OK, 
Okay, I have just a couple more things to talk about. I just took a long break. I had um, people here for lunch. <laughs> I, I have a, my schedule's always kind of crazy. Um, I have people keep saying to me, oh, your house must be empty now. You have, you know, I have two kids graduated from college and, and one in college and then I still have a high school student, but, but no, people are here <laughs> in and out all day long. And I love it, so I, I'm not complaining, but there's always a lot going on. That's why it's, it's kind of hard to podcast, because I can never find a time, a long stretch, where I have a kind of a peaceful house. So I wanted to share, I finished a pair of socks. I finished two pairs of socks, but my I mentioned this earlier, but my son's already wearing the lollipop yarn socks, so um, I didn't want to, you know, take them away from him or make them wait make him wait to wear them. So uh, those are done. And then th this is the second pair I finished. This is the pair um, I did out of the wool bar barn. It's called Tweet Sock. And this is the soft pink colorway. And it's so pretty. I love the tweed. It's um, kind of black and cream tweed in there. And what I did is I used my How I Make My Socks pattern. And then um, I... I did a three by two rib, um, knit three, purl two rib, and then that fit in perfectly with this. Uh, it's called Eyelet Mock Cable Rib. And um, this specific four uh, round repeat stitch pattern is from Paula Emmons Feasley of the Knitting Pipeline. She did a shawl for Quince & Co. I think it was a shawl week shawl and um, for them and it had this same pattern in it and I knit that shawl I love that shawl that's another one of my favorite shawls and uh, so I loved doing the stitch pattern so much so I thought I'm gonna put it into some socks and that's what I did so I had some people asking me how do you put a stitch pattern into just like a plain uh, stockinette stitch sock pattern which is what the how I make my socks pattern is and uh, all you have to do is um, you know adjust the adjust the stitch count so it fits the stitch pattern and if you do a 64 stitch sock or a 72 stitch sock or a 56 stitch sock all of those are divisible by four and eight so if you get a stitch pattern that you can plug right in you just would go ahead and and plug that in you always keep or I always keep the bottom of the foot in stockinette so you, then you would just do the top half of the stitches once you get past the the um, heel flap and turn and you're working on the gusset I would just continue on stockinette stitch on half of the the bottom half of the foot and then the top you could continue on with the stitch pattern um, for example this stitch pattern is a five has, it's a five stitch repeat so instead of 64 stitches I just went and cast on ahead and cast on 65 stitches it doesn't make you know one stitch in fingering weight yarn is not going to make any difference really on the overall size and so that's how I I um, plug that in so you just kind of have to either pick a stitch pattern that will fit right in either an eight stitch repeat or uh, um, or a 16 stitch repeat would fit into 64 stitches or a four stitch repeat and then that would fit right into your original pattern and then you just you know plug that in do your regular heel flap and turn your gusset and and then you can just continue on with your regular toe so it's really not that complicated um, Paula I asked Paula about this stitch pattern I didn't know if she made it up or if she but she said it was a really old stitch pattern um, but I don't want to I'm not going to um, release that because it was I took it from Paula's uh, shawl pattern. So if you're really interested, it's a great shawl. <laughs> you should knit that too, and then you can take these and make some Ellison Bay. Uh, oh, the shawl is called Ellison Bay. I don't know if I said that or not, but um, you can make your own Ellison Bay socks with that. So I'm I'm really excited about these. They're they're really um, really cute, and the yarn was just lovely to knit with. So I have um, one more thing I want to talk about, and that is, um, I don't I hope I'm saying his name correctly, but it's like um, C-H-A-R-A-N, Sharon, and it's Sakar or Sakar, 
S-A-C-H-A-R, and he's the talent behind the um, Creative with Clay, and I have that beautiful mug that has the knit uh, stitch imprint on it, the stockinette stitch imprint on it. It's really beautiful. It's blue, and uh, I also have a little dish, too, a little circular dish that I use all the time. And then um, he sent me a couple trays that he has just started producing this um, garter stitch pattern. And he has it on mugs. And this is a beautiful kind of rolled edge tray that he just started making. His, um, I don't know if you see his name on there. But he, he has a Etsy, an Etsy shop called Creative with Clay. And uh, it's lovely, so you should go over there on Etsy and look him up. He's also on um, uh, Ravelry and Instagram. And uh, anyway, I'm so excited because he has so generously donated a beautiful blue um, tray with the garter stitch, isn't that is so great? And he said he worked so hard on perfecting this. So to give away to one of you, it's probably about, um, let me measure this here. It's about seven inches long and um, four inches wide, seven by four here. It's a really nice size, it'd be perfect if you wanna set your glasses down, it'd be perfect for a little scissors or stitch markers or needles or all those little things. I have the little circular train. It's filled with all those things I just said and I use it I, pretty much every day. <laughs> I use the small circular um, dish that he makes. Uh, anyway, so what I'm going to have you do is um, I'll put a link in the um, description here on YouTube to go to my blog to the show notes and um, if you leave a comment over there I will draw um, in a few days after this goes up I'll let people leave to comments and then I'll draw for the winner and then um, the green one was for me just to keep and then I'm gonna send out the the blue one to one lucky winner so I think that's really cool I'm so excited about it and um, I hope that you are too I can't really think of too much else to say. I have, um, I have a new class that I'm working on um, that I'm going to teach in Florida for the first time. It's going to be an actual sock class. So I'm teaching the How I Make My Socks class, um, uh, debuting in, at a Good Yarn in Sarasota, so I'm really excited about that. Then after that, I'm going to um, DFW Fiber Fest in Dallas, Fort Worth area which I can't wait for. I'm just thrilled. It looked like all my classes sold out except for my little owl class. That one I had still had some openings in and that class is awesome because you can finish the toy in the time. I, I taught it. I've taught it a couple times. I, I taught it when I went to um, Maryland last year and they were done with their toys it was and they're cute little owls they're just they're just adorable so if you want to join me there and, and um and you're going to be there and you're still looking for a class to take i'd love to see you in that class um and that's about it so have a great weekend i'm so glad to see you once again and um, i'll be back soon with more i have some I have some other little fun giveaway things to, for my podcast, so I'm going to try to get back a little bit sooner than I have before. So, bye knitters. Have a great day.